Hey everybody, this is Monte Cristo. Uh, I wanted to do a Monte's Musings tonight because there's been a lot of discussion about the Houston Outlaws game up against the Vancouver Titans. And I want to talk about the frustrations that I think a lot of people had with this match and also discuss what I talked about on the broadcast, which is sort of an overall issue, I think, within the Overwatch League when it comes to teams developing their own unique styles and how that can be very beneficial for teams that are never going to be as as skilled at a meta composition like GOATS as some of the top teams in this league. So... Sorry about the uh, environment I'm, I'm recording this in right now. I just moved and uh, my studio isn't set up yet, so here we are. But to discuss in particular the games that happened tonight, uh, one of the things that I said on the broadcast was that I was criticizing the Houston Outlaws for not having a style and trying to play the Vancouver Titans straight up into a 3 tank 3 support or Goat's Mirror. And... I'm not going to like show a bunch of stuff or like cause more drama on this video because I think the a lot of the players from the Outlaws and the staff were frustrated after a loss um and I think they overlook the fact that this criticism results from the fact that they actually played quite well and so they had I think a legitimate cho- shot at an upset of the Titans and if they had just gotten blown out then really none of this I think frustration from people would have occurred but it was because it was a much more close match than anticipated and they showed a lot of promise that the frustration sort of bubbled up um, and I also think a lot of people took what I was saying on the broadcast and used it in a way to imply that certain things were good or bad. Um, But also part of that too was the Houston Outlaws players and staff coming out and basically just, I mean, it was a pretty sad amount of logical fallacies where they were attacking people's authority or calling them, saying that they didn't understand the game as a result of this, the game of Overwatch at a professional level, uh, which isn't really true at all if we're talking about the people who are professionals on the Overwatch League like myself, um, and not really attacking the premise or creating straw men. Um, One of the things that was said was that we objectively, and I do think this is true, is that objectively, if we were to look at some of the points on Paris, on Eichenwald, and especially Rialto, uh, that objectively, GOATS is the best strategy. And that's very true of most, I would say, maps and points in Overwatch right now, because the reality is, with a few exceptions of very open points or points with specific architecture that promote more long-range DPS play, in a game that is about taking objectives, the ability to stick to that objective with high HP pool tanks and a large amount of sustain, um, to explain it in the most basic way possible, is going to be an extremely powerful strategy because you can't remove people from those objectives. So I do think the premise of what many of the Outlaws players was talking about is absolutely correct. And in a world where every team was capable of playing GOATS at a very high level, or you were seeing perfect play out of every team within the league, that is a true statement. But when we actually get into the reality for many of these teams... If we take a look at the Vancouver Titans, we have to remember that they have many more months of practicing GOATS in a competitive environment than any other team within the Overwatch League because they were playing in Contenders Korea when these strategies were very effective. And so it's it's hard to believe that many teams outside of potentially the other elite teams in the league, like the San Francisco Shock or the NYXL, are going to be able to beat them in a GOATS mirror. And the point that I want to make is that one thing that's been really distressing to me personally when I watch a bunch of these professional teams in Overwatch League is a lack of commitment to a team's own style or even using that team's own strengths um, in order to win matches. And I think that a lot of these arguments sort of go out the window when it comes to perfect play because we have teams like the Chengdu Hunters and Boston Uprising within Overwatch League that are very comfortable playing their own styles and indeed have seen a very good amount of success. Now, obviously, the Chengdu Hunters, 
they really, yes, they have won some matches and they have played good teams like the Titans close by being also to play goats at a relatively competent level. But a lot of the success of the Chengdu Hunters has been playing completely off meta. And the thing about the Hunters is they play their comps very well. Their execution on their comps is quite good. Is it not ideal? Absolutely not. You know, it takes a long time uh, with multi DPS compositions to chip away at a goat's composition on a on, a on an objective like on a control point or on an assault point, and there's very little room for error when you're doing that because of the amount of heal and the amount of sustain. It requires even more precision to play these compositions. But the advantage that you get is you're playing to your own player's strengths. When we see the Chengdu hunters go out there, and we know that Among is potentially the best wrecking ball player in the whole damn world and we can see how he knows more positions to use the pile driver how intelligent he is about using the minefield to cut off choke points or when we see players like Jinmu who may not thrive you know playing on a tank or support but his mechanical abilities allow him to put out damage and get kills that maybe other players couldn't we see how the Chengdu hunters are saying okay well we know we're not going to be good at this sort of meta but you know what we can beat teams who are playing the meta who are not very good at it by playing our own style and that has now led them to a five and five record overall in the overwatch league with some quite close matches versus good teams now would they be able to actually beat an elite team using these compositions Maybe not, but at least I feel like they're playing to their own strengths now similarly the Boston uprising now you may look at Boston and you might think to yourself, well, uh, a lot of these compositions that you're, they're running are GOATs, and that's true. But Boston is very weird because they actually win fewer than 50% of their overall team fights within the Overwatch League, but the way they're winning matches is because they win the right team fights. And they win the right team fights not from using different strategies uh, by differentiating from GOATs, but by using different tactics. And they play so smart. Boston has a series of set plays, and They've integrated RCK into these set plays and even expanded them now that they have some more Sombra use within their team. And they use set plays in order to disrupt or surprise opponents, win a fight, win the right fight, and take objectives, or because they make certain audibles, as in change their calls within a game to play more aggressively or surprise their opponents. And therefore, the Boston Uprising are actually one of the most interesting teams, I feel like, in the Overwatch League right now, because they are able to take their resources, find a style that works for them, and play very close matches versus good opponents, even though they may not even be that great as a whole at team fighting. And so this is what I'm talking about. And I think that one of the unfortunate things and, and my personal frustration when I was casting the match tonight was that we saw the Houston Outlaws have a long break, a long time to clean up some of these issues. They were under 50% win rate. It looked like we were moving into a meta that would really suit their strengths. If you think about their individual players' capabilities and the way that the meta has opened up a little bit, even though it is still... Uh, you know, going to be primarily talking about goats overall as being the the primary strategy. Sorry about the noise in the background. But even if it is going to be the primary strategy, there are now there is more room to win in other ways uh, than there was previously. And I think if you're really looking to create an upset, you have to be able to identify your own style. At some point, you still have to play goats, and you still have to play it at least marginally well, and we saw that from the Houston Outlaws. But I think my disappointment was that when you come out strong, and yes, Busan is a very DPS-friendly map, and yes, you can play you know, players like Linkser and have them pop off and get to the win, but I think it's unrealistic to think that you're going to be able to close out that series, especially when you know Rialto is map four, you don't have an option besides playing goats on that map to not at least experiment with other compositions. And they did experiment with other compositions and it was successful at times on maps like Eichenwald. And they had a good defense there on Eichenwald B, but they couldn't convert in the end. And I think that's where a lot of the frustration from myself and from, from fans comes from when we take a look at the Overwatch League right now. And I think that there's a different way the Outlaws could have approached this, and maybe they think this themselves, which is that we're unlikely to win against the Vancouver Titans, but if we tighten up our GOATS play, maybe we can beat teams that aren't those elite GOATS teams, right? 
But I'm not even sure that's going to be true because all teams are sort of collectively getting better at GOATs as time moves on. So there doesn't seem to me to be a very particular, particularly high upside uh, for the Houston Outlaws. And I also think it's frustrating because when we look historically at what has happened with Houston, dialing back all the way to last year, um, they played their own style. You know, they were out there playing a lot more Junkrat than most other teams. They were out there, even at a Widow meta, with Linkser being successful on the Widowmaker, but playing a lot of Widow. So we've seen them sort of have their own flavor in the past, and that seems to have sort of just disappeared uh, this season overall. And they seem unwilling to take risks. And I think that's really a broader problem with the way that Overwatch League teams view the game right now in general, is that they are unwilling to take risks because the logic is, well, if we can suddenly become a god tier goat team we will be unstoppable because it is again objectively the best thing to be good at right now but there's not a reality check for teams that are not Chengdu or Boston to say we are never going to get there and instead why don't we focus our resources into trying to find our own style because there's such this I think there is a reluctance to face fan backlash and you see that uh Houston was not very good at, at handling public criticism today, to put it mildly. Um, but there is this reluctance because of public backlash to at least experiment and try other strategies. But I think as a long-term solution and a long being able to get the most value out of the players and the staff and the opportunities that you have within a team, that is not going to be a great way to move forward. And sometimes you just sort of have to fail for a bit. Um, in order to find out what is the most effective strategy for you. So this is something that I've also seen in other games in the past. And I think that if we, in my history in, if, of watching and participating in esports, and this goes back all the way to you know my time early in esports when I was uh, just starting out in the scene about you know 13, 14 years ago, uh, and I started getting involved in, in professional Warcraft, and I have now been involved in some way in seven different games in esports. And over my many years of observing and participating in these professional communities, it's it really has been that it's almost never works for teams that are never going to be good at a specific style of play to try and mimic that style of play. And if we look at um, what happened for many years in League of Legends, for example, is that a lot, in particular, the North American LCS teams would try to mimic the play and style of Korean teams in an attempt to get better. But they were never realistically going to have the level of skill that the Korean teams had, partially because they weren't facing the same level of competition, so they could sort of only watch it and mimic it instead of trying to, you know, scrimming these teams day in and day out and really understanding thoroughly the reasoning behind it or the ways to react in different situations. But if we take a look at the history of League, one of the most successful teams against Korean teams at international competition was actually the Flash Wolves, and this is a Taiwanese team that played a radically different style to anything that we saw from the Korean teams. And even though their strategies were sometimes objectively worse than the perfect option that Korean teams would always try and seek out and do, they were so surprising and they were so unlike anything that Korean teams had ever encountered that they were able to pull off many, many wins against top Korean teams, create big upsets at international tournaments. European teams were occasionally able to do the same thing. Chinese teams were occasionally able to do the same thing by having a very different styles, styles of play. And that, at times, created some really shocking upsets. And I think that's why myself and everybody else admires the Chengdu Hunters so much right now, because you realize that they have a certain level of self-awareness, and that level of self-awareness is that they will never be good at this thing, uh, or at least not as good as other teams. So they have to find something else to throw off their opponents. They have to find something that they are so good at that the other teams can't prepare for it because no one else can do that thing. And so when you're actually face-to-face -face with it in a match, it will, it will really throw them off guard and maybe create an upset here or there. Now, Chengdu, it must be said, has yet to pull off like a major upset win against an elite team. But 
I think they're at least keeping themselves very competitive within this league in spite of having some pretty glaring strategic holes that you can point to and say, this is not ideal what they're doing right now, but damn, it's still working, right? So I think one of the things that is frustrating is because the Outlaws have a lot of good players. And when we look at them and we say, wow, Muma like, looks like he's going to be a great tank in this meta. Look at Linkser's mechanical ability and what he can do. He can make opportunities for them just based on crazy individual plays. And sometimes you just have to throw caution to the wind and let a star player just be themselves and try and make those opportunities and see if it can work, right? Um you know, we, we've got all of these opportunities on this team to maybe make a difference here or to potentially even go down the Chengdu route, play a lot of these multi-DPS compositions. And there's always that fear, right, that you come back and you say, wow, this is like, you know, I understand the game very well as a player or as a coach. And you can say, Ooh, this is, you know, maybe not the highest probability way if both teams are playing perfect Overwatch in order to win a map or to win a game or to win a match, right? And that's true, but it might also be simultaneously that team's best probability because your your probability of doing the other thing is is worse, right? You are worse at the GOAT's composition. You will never be as good at it. So the, your only shot is to really kind of throw a spanner in the works of the other team by some crazy plays. And I think this is something that I really like other Overwatch League teams to start thinking about because I think, unfortunately, that... From an analytic perspective, everybody understands the dominance of GOATs and everybody understands why it's good and why it's the best. So it's easy to get caught in that trap and say, well, we're going to do it too. But you probably aren't going to do it. So you might as well try some other stuff and show off your own flair and show off the strengths that you do have as a team. And I don't think teams are being reflective enough about that. Um, and I think there is, like, there must be even some understanding of the Houston Outlaws about this fact, because otherwise I don't think they would have been so upset, right? At some level, to get that upset about it, the only options that you have are to say, oh, well, we're practicing goats to beat teams that aren't the Vancouver Titans. So you can say, well, we knew we were going to lose that match, but you know what? We'll take some wins against some other teams. Or you say... You know, you, you have to admit basically that you're never going to be as good at them, in which case the following question is, well, why not try and be something that you are super good at and that you have a flair with and that you can really show off your strengths? So that's my thoughts today, guys. Sorry about the uh, less than stellar production value, but I wanted to get this out there. And hopefully some other Overwatch League teams are really going to take a step back and think about their style and whether or not they will be able to perform GOATs or whether potentially they'd be better off doing something else.